Okay, so for the molecular geometry for NF3, we'll first look at our Lewis structure here. You can see there are three fluorine atoms around that central nitrogen, and also, very importantly, there's a lone pair of electrons on top of the nitrogen. So those three atoms in that lone pair of electrons, they're going to repel each other, and that's what's going to give NF3 its molecular geometry. So if you imagine all those valence shell electron pairs repelling each other, you'll end up with a molecular geometry that looks something like this. We have our nitrogen here in the center, and then the green, those are the fluorine atoms. So you can see that these atoms have spread out, but what you don't see here is that lone pair of electrons. Let's add that in. And it's sitting right here on top of this nitrogen. It's right above it, and we call this a trigonal pyramidal because it's kind of like a pyramid with the top of the pyramid being these two electrons. You could also use the AXN notation to determine the molecular geometry for NF3. A, that's going to be the nitrogen in the center. X, that's the number of atoms. We have three fluorine atoms. And then N, that's going to be this lone pair of electrons. So we have one lone pair of electrons right there. So we have AXN is our molecular geometry. You could have memorized that that is a trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry, or if you had a table, you could look it up. And on our table here, we have AX2, AX3, all the way down to AX6, AX2N, AX2N2, and there it is, AX3N. It is trigonal, pyramidal, and the bond angles are about 109.5 degrees. We can go back to our three-dimensional structure and look at the bond angles now. So the bond angles, for instance here or here, are about 109.5 degrees. They're not going to be exactly 109.5. So that is the molecular geometry for NF3. It is trigonal, pyramidal, and this is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.